Welcome to our lecture online and on this next video here we're going to take a closer look at the four quantum numbers starting with quantum number n. The four quantum numbers are the four numbers that we use to define the structure of the electron orbits around the nucleus of an atom and in particular we're going to take a look at the hydrogen atom uh, because that's the most simple atom and it's the easiest to work with in order to define and explain how the quantum numbers define the structure of the orbits of the electrons around the nucleus. So, the first one is called the n, that's called the principal quantum number because that quantum number defines the energy levels where the electron reside. So, the electron can be residing in what we'd call the most basic or I should say the, um, the lowest energy level, it's a better way to say it, lowest energy level, and so we call that quantum number equal to 1. So that's also called the K-shell. We can say that the electrons reside in regions around the nucleus called shells, and the innermost region, the one that has the lowest energy state, has a quantum number n equals 1, and it's also called the K-shell. And in that orbit, the electron goes around the nucleus in one swoop where the circumference of that orbit is equal to one complete wavelength of the electron. Remember, we discovered that electrons behave like waves, and so when they move or go around orbits, in, uh, in, when they move in orbits around the nucleus, they, go, they do so like a wave, and so the length of the orbit has to equal an integer number of wavelengths, and so for the lowest energy level, that is equal to exactly one wavelength. So we can take a look at it here. Let's assume that this is the innermost energy level, n equals 1, so this would be the K-shell, and so one trip around the nucleus would be equal to one complete wavelength. Now, we also discovered that the energy that the innermost, um, the innermost orbit has is minus 13.6 electron volts divided by the quantum number squared. Now, of course, for the first energy level, for E sub 1, and we can write that down here, right, for E sub 1, that is equal to minus 13.6 electron volts divided by 1 squared, or simply minus 13.6 electron volts. That is the lowest energy level in the hydrogen atom. So, if an electron were to reside here, and you want to remove the electron away from the nucleus, you would have to donate that much energy, 13.6 electron volts, to get it away from the nucleus. If you have an electron from way out here and you allow it to fly into the atom and reside in the innermost energy level, it would then release a photon of the quantity of 13.6 electron volts. So that's what we mean by the energy state of that particular orbit or that particular shell. Now, also notice that for other atoms that have more than one uh, proton in the nucleus, defined by the Z number or the atomic number, for example, the next element would be helium. So what would be the energy of the lowest energy state of helium? Well, since helium has two protons, that would be an atomic number of two. Two squared is four. That means the innermost energy level of uh, helium has four times the energy 4 times 13.6, which would be 54.4 electron volts of energy, or that should, the, the energy state would be minus 54.4 electron volts. That would be the best way to say that. So E sub 1 for helium, so this is for hydrogen, for helium is equal to minus 13.6 electron volts times 2 squared divided by 1 squared, that would be for the innermost energy level, so that would be equal to minus 54.4 electron volts. And then the next element would be lithium, that would be 3 squared or 9 times 13.6 elect electron volts and so forth. All, if you take into in mind that we can only do so if there's only a single electron in that atom. If there's more than one electron, then the interaction between the electrons does throw this whole equation off a little bit and it, things become rapidly very complicated. Alright, another thing we should know is the distance to the various regions, energy regions, where electrons can exist. So where would an electron exist if it jumps to the n equals 2 level? So when that's no longer the basic lowest energy level, but now it jumps to the next energy level, n equals 2. An electron can reside that, but it would now be at a higher energy state, uh, instead of a lower energy state, an excited state, as you will. And so where would it reside? Well, it turns out, and I have this written down here somewhere, all right, here we go, that the radius of the orbit, 
as a function of the principal quantum number is the principal quantum number squared times the basic radiance of a hydrogen atom at its most fundamental state or its lowest energy state. The, the radius, which is called the Bohr radius, is equal to 0.053 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which is nanometers, so 0.053 nanometers. So where would the electron reside if we jump to the next energy level, the n equals 2 level, where we're now in the L shell, the next shell where electrons can reside? It turns out, since 2 squared is equal to 4, the radius now would be 4 times the basic radius. So that, that orbit would be 4 times as far away from the nucleus as the innermost energy level. What about the third energy level? Now we jump up to the n equals 3 level. Let me get rid of that. It kind of looks like 13. So n equals 3 level. Well, at that point, the radius would be 9 times the original radius. 9 times the radius that the, the atom would be if it, went as it, if it was in its most fundamental energy state or its lowest energy state. So you can see how the size of the shells grow rapidly as a function of the, quanta, the principal quantum number squared. One more thing is, what would be the length of the wavelength of the electron as it goes in there, uh, as, it, as it goes around the orbit at these various energy states? Well, we already realized that the energy or the wavelength of the innermost of the electron traversing around the nucleus in innermost energy level would have to be equal to the circumference, which would be 2 pi times the basic radius. So that would be the, the wavelength of the electron as it moves around in this innermost energy level. Now, Turns out, as the electron jumps to the next level, and it goes around the second energy level, it now covers a distance equal to 2 pi r, but that would then have to be equal to twice the, the uh, wavelength. So um, you can say that twice the wavelength of the second level would be equal to 2 pi times the radius of the second level. And the radius of the second level, right here, would be 4 times the original radius. So that would be equal to 2 pi times 4 times the basic radius of the innermost energy level. So now we can say if we divide both sides by 2, we can now say that lambda, and you know what, I'm going to erase this, that way we have a little bit more room to work with, otherwise things get a little bit too crowded here. So I'm going to divide this side by 2, and we're going to divide this side by 2, so we have the wavelength of the second shell, or the second energy level, lambda sub 2 is equal to, divide this by 2, that would be 4 pi a sub naught, and that would then be, of course, twice this, so this is equal to 2 times the wavelength of the inner, innermost level. So we can see then when the electron jumps to the second level, its wavelength has now doubled in size. Now, take a look at this equation right here where we had this relationship between the wavelength and the velocity of an electron. So if the wavelength doubles, what happens to the velocity? Well, let's take this equation over here and rearrange it so we can say that the velocity is equal to h divided by mv. Oh, now mv now because I moved my lambda down here, so m times lambda. So if lambda doubles, what happens to my velocity? The velocity then goes to half, which means that when electron jumps from the innermost level to the next level, the wavelength becomes twice as big and the velocity drops to half its normal velocity. What happens when the, wave, when the electron now jumps to the third level? Well, we can take a look over here. So since the circumference now would be equal to three wavelengths, let's do, the, let's do that. So three, three times the wavelength at the third level is equal to the circumference of the third energy level right here. That would be two pi times the radius at the third level. So two pi times the radius at the third level. But the radius at the third level is now nine times the basic radius, right? Because it's a function of n squared, and n is three in that level. So n squared would be nine, and so that would be equal to two pi times nine times the basic level, like that. And now you can see that if I now take these two right here, divide both sides by three, I get lambda sub three is equal to three goes into nine, three times, and three times two is six, it would be six pi times a sub naught, and that would have then of course be three times two pi a sub naught, so this would be equal to three times lambda sub one. So you can see that if the electron jumps to the second level, its wavelength is now twice as great, twice as large. When it jumps to the third level, the wavelength is now three times as large, which then means that the velocity would be one third. So now you can see that as the electron jumps up to higher energy levels, the wavelength becomes, uh, let's see here, the wavelength becomes 
larger and therefore the velocity becomes smaller. So twice the size of the original wavelength, three times the size of the original wavelength, correspondingly the velocity goes to one half, one third, one fourth, and so forth as it goes up to higher and higher energy levels. So the principal quantum number n simply describes the level, the energy level that the electron is in, which then corresponds to regions around the nucleus, which we call shells, and then we've named the shell K shell, L shell, M shell, N shell, and so forth, M, O, P, Q, and so forth, for higher and higher energy levels. So that's our first basic quantum number, the principal quantum number, and we'll talk about the other three in the future videos.